Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All praises due to Allah, the dispenser of good, al muhsin and the sustainer of all the universe, al razak We are grateful for the beautiful blessing of Sunanda al salam and we thank Allah for the expressions of Iman and Hassan, faith and excellent character that can manifest through our surrender. We thank Allah for the blessing of his last and final messenger to all humanity, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent for the purpose of guiding all of humanity to the path that leads to Allah. We are grateful for the ever-present reminders of the service and sacrifice of our elders who preceded us in faith, and for whom we make the following prayer. O oh, our Lord, forgive us our sins and the sins of our brothers and sisters who have preceded us in faith, and allow, allow not any malice to enter our hearts towards any of them. Amen. We are taking the opportunity of this blessed month of Ramadan to reflect on the many avenues of goodness. Each day during this blessed month, we will briefly examine a virtuous deed and attempt to figure out how we can implement it in our daily lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, our prayer, and our reflections in this blessed month. Amen. This series is entitled 30 for 30, 30 virtues for 30 days. Today's virtue is humility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Furqan, chapter 25, verse 63, For the true servants of the most gracious are the ones who walk gently or who walk humbly on the earth. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, God has told me that you must be humble and that no one must boast to another. Shall I inform you of one who the hellfire shall not touch? Hellfire will not touch one who is near to Allah and amiable with people and mild and easy to get along with. Allah will exalt one who is humble, that one sees himself as small even though he is truly great in the sight of people. And O oh Allah, make me see myself as small. In our day-to-day -day lives, we sometimes find it difficult to show true humility in the face of trials and tribulations or in the face of the blessings that we've been given by Allah SWT. For us to truly inculcate this idea of humility in our lives, we have to understand two things. We have to have knowledge of who Allah is and we have to have knowledge of ourselves. If we know that Allah is our razak the ever-providing, our rahim the merciful, Al-Afu, the partner, at tawab the acceptor of repentance, Al-Malik, the king, Al-Quduz, the holy, As-Salam, the source of peace, Al-Rafi, the exalted, Al-Khafid, the abaser, As-Sami, the all-hearing, Al-Basir, the all-seeing, Al-Adil, the just, and so on. If we understand who Allah is, then we know that it is Him on whom we depend. If we know who Allah is, then we know that without Him, we are nothing. We know that we cannot even wake ourselves up in the morning unless Allah SWT has given us life after He has put us to sleep. We know that Allah alone is in control and the only thing that we can control are the choices that we make. So we have to have knowledge of the self as well. When we realize that we are man, we are insan, we are the ones who forget, we are the ones who sin, we are the ones who might be blind. We are the ones who are deaf. We are the ones who are ignorant. We are the ones who do not see the signs and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones who are needy. We are the ones who are dependent, etc. When we understand that we are the ones who are dependent on all of the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we see that it's not about what we can achieve, but that we are flawed in spite of the covenant of being Allah's representative on earth, when we realize that we are flawed in spite of this elevated status, then we realize that we have more reasons to be humble than we have to be proud. When Allah speaks about Kaunan in the verse I narrated, the meaning that comes across from this idea of humility to become easy, to be of little importance, to be insignificant, to esteem with no regard. However, we want to contrast this against kibr or pride. And when Allah speaks about he does not like the mustakbirin, the ones who show kibble, he's speaking about the ones who they engage in bigness, they engage in increasing themselves, in, in magnifying their egos, in exalting themselves, in glorifying themselves, in praising and celebrating themselves. These are the ones who Allah and his messenger, they do not love. To be humble is not to be poor, nor is it 
to not stand for what is right. Allah loves when we display our gratitude for the favors that He has bestowed upon us. However, it is important that we do it knowing that He is the one who gave us these blessings. To be humble is to give Allah His rights and to give man their rights. To prefer others over ourselves. To not demand too much of others, but always willing to give more to others. To not exact rights when they are owed, but to seek to give rights anytime we owe them. To seek forgiveness from Allah when we sin. To seek pardon of others when we transgress them. To mend relationships when they are broken. To be the first one to reach out and to make peace whether we are right or we are wrong. To be the first one to give that salam when that salam is needed the most. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards humility. It is the reason that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah only increases a person in status if he forgives and no one ever humbles himself before Allah and he is not raised in status. Imam al-Nawawi mentioned that Allah raises us in status in two ways. One, in this life he, he increases us in status by allowing the people to have a love for us in their hearts because of the humility that we demonstrate. And secondly, he increases us in status in, the, in Jannah as a reward for our humility. SubhanAllah, we are rewarded in this life and in the next for our humility. Allah does not love the ones who are proud. Allah says in Surah an nahl chapter 16, verse 23, Behold, he, Allah, does not love those who are given to arrogance. We can increase our humility by making clear choices, when, even though we have the ability to act with pride. We choose not to show others that we are right, or choose not to always have it our way. We choose to prefer others over ourselves. By choosing to submit ourselves wholly to Allah and to give Him what He demands of us, by choosing the choice to be distinguished but not entitled. By choosing the, the choice to give others what they need even though we may have the power to exact what we want. By choosing submission in its fullest form. By choosing our Al-Islam. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes pride from our hearts and increases us in humility. I pray that He increases us in gratitude and increases us in humility towards Him and towards others. Amen. One aspect of humility is to be in service to others. I call on us to consider doing a small kindness that will allow us to get closer to Allah and will allow us to ease the life of others. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our fasting, I pray that He accepts our prayers, and I pray that He accepts our virtuous deeds in this holy month. My name is Kaiser Abdullah, and this is 30 for 30.